Welcome to this soul lifting broadcast, which has been put together for your spiritual growth and to make greatness common right where you are. Be sure to make the best of this moment as God takes the lead in all that concerns you. All right, for everyone joining us online, I want to welcome you very specially to this service. I wanted to put distractions away from you and get ready to be blessed by the teaching and preaching of God's word today. Uh, whether you're joining on any of our social media platform, on our online church platform, or on Pop Center TV, what, wherever you're joining from, I want you to uh, please fully engage because I believe that God is going to speak to you and your life will never be the same again in Jesus' precious name. Uh, can we appreciate everyone joining us all around the world for online and different platforms? Let's appreciate them. Praise God. This morning, or whatever time it is where people are joining from, we're starting a new series of teachings that we have tagged the Abundance Blueprint. The Abundance Blueprint. And I'm going to be bringing the first message in the series, which I've titled A Covenant of Abundance. A Covenant of Abundance. Um, at the Elevation Church, we decide on what to teach uh, amongst other different considerations, but two principal considerations. One, based on the leading of the Holy Spirit, and secondly, based on prevailing issues that needs to be addressed. We don't want to be a church that is playing the ostrich, burying our head in the sand, and uh, you know, teaching apocalypse when people are going through apocalypse. <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> I hope you understand what I'm saying. So that, 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 those two are overriding for us amongst many other things that decide, I mean, that helps us to uh, determine what we teach. I mean, for instance, next Sunday, our resident pastor will intimate us with that very soon. Next Sunday, we're going to run some survey in the service, right in the service, that we, as we plan for next year, you are contributing into that plan uh, because we want to hear your voice about the different areas where you feel the church should pay more attention to. Uh, so please make sure you are available next Sunday, uh, whether online or in person, to be able to participate in that, that survey. A covenant of abundance. This message series is also informed, informed by those two things I've mentioned. The fact that the Holy Spirit is leading us to do this and the fact that we need to speak to the subject of the covenant, especially the covenant of abundance at this time. God has different kinds of covenant with his people. The covenant of divine protection. When you read the book of Psalms, you see the expressions of different kinds of covenant that God has with his people. Psalm 91 is a covenant of divine protection. Psalm 23 is a covenant of abundance. Yeah. And the writers of all these Psalms uh, after thorough meditation on the power of the covenant, make bold declaration in songs and hymns. And those are the things that we call the Psalms today. They, they're songs that, that, that came out of the abundance of the heart of people who have chosen to meditate fully on the covenant that they have with God to the point that it became their own proclamation. So, for instance, in, in Psalm 23, the writer of that, that, that psalm, the psalm of David, David, after taking full comprehension and meditation of God as the great provider and then putting it in his own context as a shepherd boy, he wrote that psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. And you know, uh, uh, as a shepherd boy, he had seen seasons. The seasons where water is not available. The seasons where you have to take your animal to a different part of the city and all that. He has, he has seen seasons and he has seen the fact that the shepherd is always there to locate the right place for the sheep, to make the right provision for the sheep. And he got a revelation of God as the great shepherd, the best shepherd. As we take this series, I believe that God is going to deliver a unique revelation to you. I cannot hear your amen. amen. I said God is going to deliver a unique revelation to you. Amen. Like he delivered to, Moses, I mean, to David and he wrote that psalm. You will be able to say, this is the God that I serve. And whatever goes on in my world, my revelation is secured because I know 
that I have a covenant with Jehovah. We're, we're living a, a, a time and a season of where we need to hold on to the covenant like never before. In the past week, we've seen all sorts of things happen. Oil price has gone up around the world with definite implications on different parts of the world. Yeah. Um, in, in, in the location where we are in Nigeria here, cooking gas, they just said, went up by like 30 or 40%, and it affects every other thing. There have been job losses all around the world. When the breadwinner in their home is without a job for the last 18 months, it obviously affects you know, what goes on in the home. It affects the capacity, or, you know, or, or it affects provision in that home. Or for people joining us from anywhere around North America, you know, or even in, in, in Europe, in the United Kingdom, the, the, uh, the real estate has gone up so much that young people who have left home before, who could afford rent, are now going back home to stay with their parents just to right-size their budget. Yeah, because they now can no longer afford afford to pay rent. In some parts of North America, I, I mean, property price has gone up like 50% or more, almost double in some places. All kinds of things are going on around the world. And when you go through all these things, one thing that should create an anchor for my soul and your soul is the understanding of the covenant. The understanding of the covenant. By the way, it's important to mention and reiterate again that the covenant is a peculiar word that is used for a contract or relationship. All the lawyers in the house here today and people who, who, who do things around writing contracts and or legal agreement will understand contracts and covenant from that perspective. God does not operate casual arrangements casual relationship. No. He operates covenant. He demands covenant. He comes uh, on, uh, for engagement at a covenant level. All business people in this house this morning, none of you will sign a contract, I mean, uh, will, will, will be casual about uh, uh, a consideration that will involve you, for instance, coughing out a million dollars. You want a contract. I mean, that's even too far, right? So people will do a contract for 50K. <laughs> Am I saying the truth? Yeah. You say you have to sign something. You have to sign something. This Before I can make this kind of consideration, you have to sign something. Yeah. God operates covenant. The highest level of covenant in heaven and on earth is what we call the blood covenant. And the highest level of covenant in existence ever is the blood covenant called by the sinless, the blood of the sinless Son of God. So, God of praise covenant, Jesus called a covenant on our behalf with God on my behalf and on your behalf. My salvation is not just an occurrence, it's a, it's a landmark event because it's premised on a landmark occurrence that Christ hung on the cross of Calvary, shed his blood for you and I, was buried and rose on the third day. The greatest occurrence in the history of humanity because it, 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 it brought humanity's relationship with God to a whole new level and opened something new to us. But you know it did not start there. It didn't start there. It started with Abraham. It started with Abraham. That's why still today, most of the world's major religions are still premised on the Abrahamic covenant. It started with Abraham. Let's go back there to where it started from. It starts with Abraham. The God's promise of abundance is, is, you know, starts with Abraham, but it was activated. I'm going to read one or two scriptures to buttress this. It was activated uh, through Christ for everybody. Now, and now it's accessible by faith to everyone, notwithstanding what is happening in your world, it's accessible by faith if you, if you choose to operate with God based on covenant, you gain an understanding of, of, of that relationship, it singles you out in any situation of life. Genesis chapter 17, reading from verse 4, God was speaking to Abraham. 
As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abraham, I mean Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. said, I will make you exceedingly fruitful. I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants. And God was emphasizing, I want to be God to you and your descendants. This covenant is an everlasting covenant between you, me, and you and your generations to come. Look at uh, verse 8 there. It said, also I give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger and all the land of, of Canaan as an everlasting possession and I will be their God. Now when you read this, and the different covenant statements that ensued between God and Abraham all through the book of Genesis, from, starting from Genesis chapter 12 to Genesis 15, Genesis 17, also Genesis 22, when God then put the icing on the cake when Abraham said, uh, I'm willing to sacrifice the son of promise. And then God swore over him. Abraham took his journey with God from one level to the other, uh, increasing the efficacy of that covenant. God was showing much more commit commitment as Abraham, uh, Abraham demonstrated much more commitment. But this is where I'm going. God promised Abraham and his children. For instance, I'm a Nigerian. I'm not Jewish, biologically. So ordinarily, if you read it just based on the letter of the word, I don't qualify to leverage the covenant that God has with Abraham. But when Christ came, he did not deny his Jewish nature, but he said, I have come to open the door to everyone to partake in this Abrahamic covenant. Yeah, that's what he came to do. He came, though God had to look for someone connected to Abraham, that's why he had to be Jewish, but yet, the same way God demanded that Abraham sacrifice Isaac and Abraham accepted as a gesture, God reciprocated that gesture when he sent his own son. Jesus, or Isaac, happened to be a typology of Christ. There's a man that can go that length with God, there's a God that can go further with humanity. Is somebody still with me today? Yeah. So God now sent his own son, and he came through the same lineage, laid down his life, died for you and I and took this covenant beyond Abraham's biological descendant to all of us who will come into Christ. Galatians chapter 3, where you read from verse 13 and 14, it's a popular scripture that I believe that most of us are familiar with. Galatians 3, 13 and 14 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, curse is everyone who hangs on a tree said that the blessing of who? Are you still in this room? The blessing of who? The blessing of who? Said that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ. Who are the Gentiles in Christ? Anyone that is not a biological Jew is a Gentile, according to biblical parlance. Anyone that is not a biological Jew is a Gentile. And Jesus, uh, the Bible says, came to open us up to that blessing, that the blessing of Abraham may rest upon the Gentiles in Christ, that uh, we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. That's why Jesus made bold to say in John 10 and verse 10, the enemy has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but I have come that you may have life and have it in abundance. Come that you may have life and have it in abundance. That's why he came. That's why he came. That's why he came. Glory be to Jesus. Is somebody following me today? Are you getting something out of this? That's why I came. I needed to listen very intently this morning 
what is happening in our world and what will continue to happen in our world, we consistently demand an understanding of the covenant that we have with God for us not to be derailed, submerged, or overwhelmed by the things that will happen around us. A covenant person or a covenant-minded person is not easily overwhelmed. Yeah. Even when he or she is overwhelmed, uh, it's easy to, to turn things around like, David, why are you downcast, oh my soul? Put your hope in God because it's the God of the covenant. The moment you remember the covenant, you can jack out of any situation. Yeah. You can jack out of, any, you can jack out of fear, jack out of anxiety when you remember the covenant. But to live a life that is completely, you know, oblivious of the covenant means that we live like mere men, men and women without a covenant. And when that happens, we don't see the effect of the covenant in our lives. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. The covenant of abundance or promise of abundance is like, it's like a posited check or something like that. A check that is, you know, that doesn't have expiry date. It's cashable at any time, cashable in any location, cashable at any time of the day, you know, 24-7 and all that. Can we look at the, 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 the breadth and the length of this covenant of abundance quickly? Covenant of abundance. The covenant of abundance speaks to abundance for all stages of life. Abundance for all stages. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 17 he said, and I've, uh, and I've said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt to the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Ephites and the Jebusites to the land flowing with milk and honey. The covenant of abundance is for all stages of life. Israel was in captivity in Egypt and God was with them. When the right time came, God allowed them to move. They had to pass through the wilderness, and right in the wilderness, the covenant of divine provision was still working. It was still working. You know, I need to pause to say this to somebody here this morning. There was a testimony we took in the first service that we were not able to take in this service because of time, about somebody who, I mean, works with the multinational and all that, but stagnated for 11 years, no promotion, no, you know, just moving laterally around for 11 years. And from the uh, accelerated conference of this year, she got a word and then God brought her out. Now, this is what I'm saying. There are seasons of life or stages of life, like some people say this is a wilderness experience and all that. What we saw about wilderness, even in the Bible, is that the covenant was still working. They were not stranded. They were not stranded. They were not stranded. How do I mean? God, you see, in the wilderness, nothing grows there. If God doesn't show up for you in your wilderness, people die in the wilderness. Is somebody still with me today? Somebody may be listening to me now, whether in the room or online. You haven't had a job in 18 months, in two years, uh, but you know God has been showing forth for you. That's the covenant of divine provision that's working for you. Somebody will say, I don't even know how my children have been, I've been paying school fees for my children or paying my rent because I, I, I've, not been, I've not been able to secure a job. I'm just doing one thing or the other. That's the God of divine provision working for you. That's the God of divine provision working for you. Nehemiah chapter 9, when you read from verse 20, Nehemiah 9 and verse 20, Nehemiah was describing the experience of the Jews through the wilderness. He said, you also gave your good spirit to instruct them and did not withhold your manna from their mouth and gave them water from, for their thirst. Forty years, you sustained them in the wilderness. They lack nothing. Their clothes did not wear, and their feet did not swell. You can go on and on. You just, Nehemiah just describing that experience. You we will not overspend time in any form of wilderness. Amen. But for anyone that may be going through a stage in life right now, maybe just bereaved, business just went down, I need you to know that if you would trust the God who has a covenant with you, a covenant of divine provision, even through that season, God will continue to show forth. Amen. Can you say a better Amen. 
So living in the wilderness does not reduce, it doesn't reduce the abundant provision of God. God still shows up even in delicate places, delicate stages of life. Let's, let's go a little further. Abundance for all ages. You know, I said abundance for all stages. There's also abundance for all ages. Psalm 37 and verse 25 the writer of that psalm says, I, I have been young and now I'm old, yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. Abundance for all ages. Abundance for all ages. You know, it's possible uh, for somebody to feel, I'm too old for God to bless me. I'm too old to start a new business. Oh, I'm, I'm too old to start a new career. I'm too old uh, to, 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 to launch this kind of project right now. This kind of project has five years of gestation. Uh, and now I'm 60. Uh, how will I just be launching this kind of project right now? Those are mindsets that hold us back from understanding that the covenant of divine provision and abundance is abundance for all ages. Is co that covenant works through the ages. Uh, somebody may say, I'm too young to do this kind of thing. And God is saying, you are not too young because my covenant is upon your life. Glory be to Jesus. Can you hear me look at your neighbor? Just like we say in this part of the world. Tell your neighbor, say, you are not too young to run. Yeah, whatever office. I don't mean political only. Whatever office, destiny office that God is opening up for you, you are not too young to run. You know, before the last election here in Nigeria, uh, the phrase, not too young to run, was very common. Yeah, because the young people were making, uh, 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 you know, a, a serious uh, position, taking a position that we should bring down the, all the age restrictions for people going to, uh, you know, uh, for federal legislators, for governors and all that. You're not too young to run. And it's sort of by political race. There are so many races that God has earmarked for you in destiny. You're not too young to run. Don't postdate the timing of your blessing from God. Is somebody see, hearing me today? Yeah. Don't postdate the timing of your blessing from God. You're not too old to run, not too young to run. And if you understand that the covenant works for all ages, abundance for all ages. Also quickly, uh, if I move to the next one quickly, abundance for all seasons. All seasons. Life runs in seasons and times. But there's no season that my God is not strong enough based on his covenant to give you abundance. Psalm 89 and verse number 4, uh, verse 34, sorry. Psalm 89 and verse 34. It says, my covenant I will not break, nor will I alter the things that have come out of my mouth. And that is not restricted to seasons. It's not restricted to seasons. Yeah. My covenant I will not break, nor alter the things that have gone out of my lips. That shows there's no restriction to seasons. God said, I don't break covenant. In every season, seasons may change but God remains the same. So adverse seasons will come in life. The faithfulness of God is new every morning. Are you still with me today? I don't, I don't know what season you are right now. Whether you are in your winter experience, uh, career-wise, where everything seems frozen because it's winter. <laughs> uh, well, you know, uh, I, I don't know what season you're, you're going through right now, but I want you to understand that the covenant does not change even in seasons. Jeremiah 17, verse 7 and 8 it says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. Jeremiah 17, verse 7 and 8 Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, who, uh, and whose hope is in the Lord, for it shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spreads out its root by the river and will not fear when it comes. It there signifies change of season. It will not fear when it comes. But its leaves will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought. That's another change of season. So drought will not bring anxiety. Will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. The covenant 
of abundance, just like every other covenant of God, works in all seasons. It works in all seasons. That's why here in this church, for instance, we have our closing charge, Psalm 1 from verse 1 to 3. Verse 3 of Psalm 1, you know, uh, is also a, a very delightful verse of the Bible. It says, it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. It brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaves shall not wither. What, whatever it does shall prosper. Glory be to Jesus. My God will continue to show forth in your life in every season. As a God of divine abundance. Uh, can I hear you better? Amen. Amen. Also, there's abundance for all location. Abundance for all location. Abundance for all location. Some people have a mindset. You know, it's supposed to have a mindset that uh, uh, there's a place called greener pasture. And it looks like only that location has a promise of abundance. <laughs> Nothing can be further from the truth. Uh, uh, that, 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 that there's only a green pasture or a greener pasture in the place where God has planted you. The place of your planting is your green pasture. If you stray from the place of your planting uh, 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 because you are guided by the covenant mindset that says abundance can happen in all location, depend on where God has planted you. Abundance for all location, depend on where God has planted you. Deuteronomy 28, when you read from verse 2, it's Deuteronomy 28 and verse 2, it says, And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. It says, Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. The city, the country. So whether you are in the urban center of whatever city you are, or you are in the countryside, or you are in the suburban side of the city, it says, blessed shall you be. Blessed shall you be. It means that God, God's covenant of abundance works in every location wherever God has planted you. And young people, listen to me. We can't, you know, we will always continue to say this, that you have to think covenant, covenant, covenant. What is written is more important than what is happening. Jesus defeated the devil by just telling him three times, it is written, it is written, it is written. What is written is more powerful than what is happening. Yeah. What is written is more powerful than what is happening. And what is written is covenant-based. What is happening is ephemeral. It, it's, it's transient. It's subject to change. Many people live their lives based on reaction, not revelation. As a believer, you're supposed to live your life based on revelation, not reaction. Yeah. When you live on reaction, the winds and the waves will carry you. The happenings in your city, in your nation, in, you know, in your family, it will sway your decision. But when you live by revelation, it may not look like it. God told Elijah in 1 Kings 17, go to the brook at, at, at Chariot said, you drink from the brook and the raven will bring you food there. The raven, you know, which is also a stingy bird and all that. He said, yeah, because that's where I placed you. And another time will come that God told the same Elijah, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon. I've commanded a widow there to feed you. And this is the, the season. This was the season of drought. So whether the season has changed, or not, God wants us to watch out for the place where he wants us to be because wherever God has planted you, the covenant of abundance will work there. So whether it's in the city, in the country, in, in you know, whatever location, God's abundance will work there. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Or say better amen, somebody. Amen. So abundance of God can find expression in any part of the world, any part of the world, any part of the world. Young people, especially if you're right here in my own location in Nigeria, uh, be careful of the Japa syndrome, Japa syndrome. Uh, may you not Japa out of God's divine location in the name of Jesus. May you not Japa out of destiny in the name of Jesus. Uh, if you don't know what that means, uh, Google it, Google it. You, you, you'll find it. 
Yeah, you'll find it. <laughs> uh, people just living, I mean, young people just looking for greener pastures, just living anyhow. Uh, be, be covenant conscious, be mindful of what God wants for you and what God has for you because there's abundance in every location. Glory be to Jesus. I said, glory be to Jesus. Very quickly, as I wrap this up, all up, having this kind of understanding that you have a covenant with God and one cardinal covenant that we have with God is a covenant of divine provision and abundance. What should be the effect of this in my life and your life as we continue to choose to meditate? You know, the Bible says when men say there's a casting down, we will say there's a lifting up. That saying there's a lifting up is based on a covenant understanding of who God is to us and how he honors his relationship in our lives. And I've showed you right now that the, the length and breadth of this covenant of abundance. What should it do in your life and my life? Let me wrap up this in five minutes. What should this do in my life and your life? If you continue to meditate on this, this scripture, if you continue to think and see God as a God of divine provision and abundance, notwithstanding what's happening in your nation or your city, not with, you, you see, somebody's listening to me today. Despite what is happening right now, this is still going to be your best Christmas so far. Yeah. This year, when you draw the line on your balance sheet this year, on your statement this year, the, the, this year will still yield a mega increase to you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Glory be to Jesus. You know, I was preaching at Gateway Church in Paracourt in the course of this last week. Uh, I think I, I, I did a Monday, Tuesday uh, evening events for them, mega church in, in Port Harcourt. And I think it was a Monday night that I spoke by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, somebody who, this, this I said, before this month is over, uh, I'm trying to remember how the Holy Spirit put it in my heart, that God will launch you into a project that will take care of 2022 completely. But this is where I'm going. Perhaps it's meant for you also, but this is where I'm going. A young man returned on Tuesday evening and met the pastor and told the pastor. So the pastor actually shared the testimony on the pulpit and then got me to meet a young man uh, who also happened to be one of their ministers in church. So it wasn't a stranger to the pastor. The guy said, from the beginning of this year, there was something that he's been working on. Things have been moving. He was making some income, but it's a particular project. And... He got a call after that Monday night service. On Tuesday morning, they had a meeting. And what they've been trying to rearrange and work on for months, they closed it that Tuesday, that same Tuesday. That was how come the, the, the testimony could come into the evening service. They closed it that Tuesday. He said his first mobilization for this project was much more than the total income he has made in the last 10 months. And this project will continue to the end of 2022. It, it doesn't have to pray for anything to do next year again. Next year is settled. <laughs> so he was begging the, the, the pastor that he, he wanted to, he wanted to sow a seed and he wanted to meet me personally. Uh, I told the pastor, the pastor brought him eventually, but uh, the reason why I'm sharing this is that when you believe the word of God, it's a covenant understanding. You're not believing a man. You're not believing a pastor. You are leveraging a covenant understanding. Proclamations have a way of enlarging your mind to see what is possible within the confines of the covenant. Yeah, what is possible. You see, uh, when the Holy Spirit is moving, it's stretching the latitude of the covenant on your behalf and helping you to see possibilities. Sometimes you shrink it back based on your level of unbelief. Some other times you lash on to that, you know, that latitude and it just, you know, things just, because, you know what Hebrews 11 says, say, by faith we understand <laughs> that the things which are seen are made out of things which, are, which do not appear. As in, they, 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 this world is created out of intangibles. 
The covenant works in the realm of intangibles and moves the tangible things that you can see. That's how it works. When God speaks, the forces that govern the universe rearrange themselves. Yeah. So somebody may be in China right now and has something to do with you as I speak here right now and for everyone online. And just because you believe a word right now, somebody in China remembers you, attends to your case, because the word, when, when God gets into a case and when God speaks into a situation, there's no force in the universe that is more powerful than the word that comes from God. Because the universe itself has, was created by the word of God. The earth that we live in, created by the word of God. Including everyone that is in it. Glory be to Jesus. Can you hear me look at your neighbor today and say, the, the, the covenant is powerful. Look at somebody else say, say, step into the covenant. Say, be conscious of the covenant. Say, live out the covenant. Glory be to Jesus. As I wrap up today, quickly, two effects that this understanding will deliver to you. One, hope replaces worry. When you step into a bigger understanding of the covenant of abundance, what happens is that hope will replace worry. Yeah, it will replace worry. You will no longer just be worrying about divine provision. You know, Jesus addressed this in Matthew 6 and verse 25. He said, Jesus in his own words, Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life. Why? You have a covenant with God. You are not irresponsible. You are just covenant-minded. Worry does not change anything. It's covenant orientation that can redirect destiny. Are you still with me today? Worry doesn't change anything. So therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. He said, it's not life more than food and the body more than clothing. He said, look at the birds of the air. For they neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into bands. What does that mean? Literally, Jesus was saying, they have no eternal consequence. Nobody's going to hold them accountable for anything. They neither sow, nor reap, or gather into bands. They don't, what they're doing has no serious consequence, yet God is providing for them. What about you, 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 and I, that God is watching over us because our actions have eternal consequence? I will then God not provide for you. He said, oh, you have little faith. Are you still with me today? Glory be to Jesus. Anxiety truncates your presence of the spirit of faith. If you don't hear anything from what I've said today, everyone online, everyone here, please understand that anxiety and worry truncates the operations of the spirit of faith. That's what it does. It reduces the, the operations of the covenant in your life. This, the effect of the covenant is delivered by faith, by faith. And I cannot worry and walk in faith at the same time. I have to choose one. I cannot embrace fear and embrace faith at the same time. I have to choose one. I cannot walk in faith and doubt at the same time. I have to choose one. I have to choose one. The understanding of the covenant of abundance will make hope to replace worry. And the Bible says hope does not disappoint. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And faith is a substance of things hoped for. So without hope, there cannot be faith. Are you still with me today? Yeah. Faith is a build up on hope. Hope is a foundation for faith. Because when you are hopeless, you cannot have faith. And one thing that the understanding of covenant of abundance will do to you is that it will replace worry with hope. To replace worry with hope. Philippians 4 and verse 6. Be anxious for nothing. Whatever city you are hearing me from this morning. Be anxious for nothing. Notwithstanding what's happening in your city. Be anxious for nothing. Everyone in Lagos. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Whatever is happening in Nigeria. Be anxious for nothing. Whatever is happening in, in, in the UK. Be anxious for nothing. Whatever is happening in North America. Be anxious for nothing. Glory be to Jesus. The second and last effect 
that I'll speak to you today is that the effect of the covenant of abundance on believers, second effect is that contentment replaces greed. When you have this understanding, the covenant of abundance, what it should do to you, knowing that God is on your case, there's a covenant, it's not a casual agreement, God says, I will provide for you. It should help you to deal with greed and all of his cousins and, and brothers and sisters. Yeah, yeah. Greed will make people make the wrong investment. Yeah, you want to get, you know, get rich quick. It's com coming out of greed. Yeah. Greed will make people take money that doesn't belong to them. Greed will make you cheat or just sue for position that God can deliver into your hand. And then there will be sharp practices. Any believer who still go for sharp practices is a proof that you don't have faith in the covenant of abundance. Yeah. You can't be cheating for what God says I will deliver to you. He doesn't need your help. You, sh you can be smart without being a cheat. <laughs> Are you still with me today? Yes. You know, because there's a way we call us some things. We call cheating smartness. Say so it's just street smart. That's not correct. Don't go for political correctness. If you are cheating, you are cheating. Say it's cheating. Yeah. It's just like in marriage too. They say somebody's having an affair. Just trying to be politically correct. It's cheating. It's an adultery. Call a spade a spade, not an agricultural implement. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you, you can't say somebody's having an affair. The person is cheating on his covenant spouse. Because marriage is also a covenant. Yeah. And we have to have respect for the covenant. A covenant with God, a covenant with our spouses, a covenant with our employers, a covenant. Another day I'll, I'll dwell on that. Different covenant that we have. We must respect those covenants. The reason why some covenants don't work for certain believers and it looks like God is not faithful is that you are a covenant breaker. You are breaking it all the way. different, And then you come and claim this one. Mm -mm. You honor covenants and then see God of the covenant show up in your life. It takes, you know, your tendency for greed away. The Bible says that godliness with contentment is great gain. Having a promise of the life that it is and the one that is to come. 1 Timothy 6 and verse number 6. Now, godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing to this world, and it is certain that we carry nothing with us. And having food and clothing, he said, with this we shall be content. And lastly today, Hebrews 13 and verse 5. Write it down. Hebrews 13 and verse 5. It's good for you. It's like multivitamin. It's good for you. Hebrews 13 <laughs> and verse 5. It's food supplement for somebody here today. Let your conduct be without covetousness. And be content with such things as you have. For he, he, the covenant keeper, he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. Yeah. Glory be to Jesus. Is somebody blessed today? I said, are you blessed today? Are you blessed today? A final tonic to go home with, to meditate on all through this week. 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8. Write it down. 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8. And we're going to read it together as we pray. Let's wrap up today. 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8. You're going to personalize it as we read it. You're going to personalize it as we read it. Can we go one, two, go? Everyone online. And God is able to make all grace abound towards me that I always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Somebody believes that today? Do you believe that today? Everyone in the room, rise on your feet, rise on your feet, everyone. Thank you for listening. We hope you are truly blessed. Please feel free to email us at info at elevationng.org for all inquiries or to share any testimonies. You can also follow us on our social media channels at ElevationNG to have access to real-time updates on all broadcasts and special programs. Till we come your way again, keep making greatness common.